It's Sunday morning with Mark Sainsbury. Well, it's time for the doctor again. Dr. Harold Hillman, our resident expert on leadership. In actual fact, it's quite a treat. We've got Harold here in the studio with us this morning. And you're talking about this whole trend, uh, Harold, these workplaces, and we've been through this, where it's tear down the walls, no one has offices, it's all go open plan. That's right, yeah. It's a pleasure to be here, Mark. And you're right, it has been a, uh, a growing trend. The first open space concept was actually introduced back in the 1950s in Germany. Uh, the idea that rearranging the furniture and creating more space where people could be together would actually increase uh, innovation and idea flow. There have been a number of studies since then. So here we are in 2014. We know a whole lot more than we did some 50 years ago. And the bottom line is the, the jury is still out. They, but, but companies yeah. must spend a lot of money. I mean, even reconfiguring the offices and That's things right. like that. They spend a lot of dough. That's right. What is it? When, what, what do they expect they were going to get out of this? Yeah, they're trying to break down. Uh, you know, they do invest a lot of money, millions of dollars, into these creative spaces. What they're trying to do is break down the traditional structures of walls and doors and things that used to keep people apart, and particularly around management versus the rest of the workforce. There was a sense that managers lived in offices and in palatial spaces, and that workers had to really uh, accessibility to managers was hard and was difficult. So the idea being that if you want more uh, generation of, of creativity, innovation, and those types of things, tear down the walls, put people in a situation where they have to work together, um, interact together, more frequent interactions, that degree of familiarity goes up. And in theory, it's supposed to create a workplace where there are no um, sort of parameters or division points between people. I'm listening to your language, and it's yeah. in theory and supposedly. Yeah. yeah. Because the reality is some studies show that, in fact, it works sometimes works against what you are trying to create. In other words, if you move from an old building where there are walls and traditional offices and doors and you move into an open space environment, if the people haven't changed the way they think about working together, just putting them into a new office isn't going to automatically then create this new world. Um, you have to really work on your concept of teams and what it means to share ideas and, and view each other as working towards common goals. Does it have some any reaction just because they think it's going to? I mean, you, know, you, you, you tear down the wall and say, right, we're all going to be, we're going to be more collaborative and we're going to be doing all this. That yeah. Even if it doesn't work, people sort of get tricked into thinking that? Yeah, there's a, a, what we call the placebo effect. And so there is that sense that we are having a better time. People do get to know each other better. So it works on that front, that people are less mysterious to each other because you end up spending the whole day with them. But there are also some disadvantages if you don't manage them. That sense of, you know, for 50% of your workforce who are introverts, these are people who like to go inward and reflect and they need their quiet time. And if you don't uh, minimize those distractions and interruptions, it's hard for them to think effectively. I, well, I, was, I was thinking about this, Harold, before you know, coming in this morning and uh, you were going to be talking about this. I wonder, is, is, is another aspect to this trend um, that if you have open plan offices, it leaves companies um, less susceptible to sexual harassment suits and inappropriate <laughs> behavior sort of things you know tear down the walls yeah, yeah. and we're saving ourselves from lawsuits and, and complaints yeah. was, it, was, was that a factor in any of it do you think no i didn't I, not so much that i think the factor has been driven more from financial gains it's just cheaper to put people <laughs> in open space um, the efficiencies to be gained, the whole creativity side. So I don't think people have been explicitly focused on minimizing the bad behaviors that would, you know, somehow go away. But, you know, it, it's harder to do those kinds of things in open space. So it, it comes down to the bosses being cheap. That's what it's about. <laughs> That's the bottom line, isn't it? Well, I think the objective is there, you know, yeah, it does. It does have an impact on bottom line. And I think that's something that organizations want to keep their eye on. But I've been to IAG. I've been to ASB. I've been to Council's new building. There, there is a sense of cutting down on the time required to go to different floors or to set up meetings. Meeting time decreases. So this idea of what a friend of mine referred to as bump, bump meetings. You bump into somebody and you have a meeting right there versus needing to schedule one two weeks from now. 
you know, just get business done in an open environment, you can take care of things. Like does that. it sort of become, does it become a fashionable thing? You know, the trend is at the moment we're all going open plan, so everyone starts doing it. Yeah, it has become fashionable. And my advice to organizations that are moving to an open uh, space plan is give some forethought to it and really think through, give people a sense of control over this environment. You can actually work against your objective if you plop people into a space and just say, sort of, you know, have at it. People do have a sense of boundaries and um, the, the sense of greater control. If I can just sort of put pictures up or do things that, you know, give me a sense that this is my space versus we've just been dumped into this open arena and told to just make it work. Is there anyone who's gone back, anyone who, who went open plan and, or would that be to admit failure? Yeah, not so much gone back, but I have seen the case in open space where particularly more senior people do revert to spaces that they sort of call their own because of uh, the kinds of conversations that they need to have coaching conversations if i have to give if i have to converse, have to have a conversation with you about poor performance it's hard to do that in an open space there are just some scenarios that require you to pull aside and and you know everything can't be done in an open space environment so i think it's reasonable i think we may have gone too far away from the fact that people do need um, for psychological comfort and security a sense of boundary and control. Well, I want everyone to know out there that Dr. Harold and I are sitting in an open space. There's no boundaries between That's us right. this morning. Hey, but listen, that is fascinating, Dr. Harold. Um, it's, it's because I think everyone has been through one of these changes. That's right. And we know, and it's, so pros and cons, and as you say, the jury is still out. Absolutely. That was a Dr. Harold Hillman, as, uh, as you heard. He advises all the top people, not only in New Zealand, but around the world on business, on leadership. And we enjoy having him here on Radio Live on Sunday mornings.